Hi, everyone. Hi. Thanks, everyone, for coming today. It got, we got lucky. It's a little sunny, and it's not as cold, right? So um, I, my name is Monica Ruiz, and I'm the executive director of Casa San Jose. And we are part of a larger coalition here uh, that have been working very hard to get the name of Colcom removed from this uh, holiday market. And um, through the efforts of this coalition, uh, we have been able to get the name of Colcom removed, right? So if you... So if you look at Santa's house here, the name uh, of Colcom was there, and it's no longer there. And the stage, the main stage uh, where there's performances, uh, I think, happening right now, the name is also removed from there. So yes, that was a great victory, and I think that we should all be very proud of the hard work that went into that. And um, I've got a couple people here today uh, that are part of the coalition who want to speak uh, a little bit about what happened, uh, what we plan to do next, and why exactly it is that we can't allow organizations like Colcom to have a presence not only in this market during the holiday season, but in this city as a whole. So, thank you. Uh, the first person that's going to speak is uh, Guillermo Perez. He is the president of the uh, Labor Council for Latin American Advancement chapter here in Pittsburgh. And he is also uh, part of the Steelworkers. And um, he is also a very proud member of the Casa, Casa San Jose board. Thank you, Monica. All right, should I speak th in this direction? Doesn't matter? All right, then I'll talk to these guys. All right. I'm here today as a labor activist affiliated with the AFL-CIO, and I think it's important for people to know that in 2009, the AFL and the Change to Win Federation reached a joint framework, reached a joint framework regarding immigration reform. The framework endorsed a process for the millions of undocumented Im immigrants living in the United States to obtain legal immigration status with a pa path to U.S. citizenship and called for reform of the current immigration laws to allow for increased authorized immigration based on the demand for labor in the U.S. economy. We call this future flows. In 2014, as a representative of the United Steelworkers, I was part of the Welcoming Pittsburgh Committee a 40-plus member committee initiated by Mayor Perduto with the goal of developing citywide policies to attract immigrants to Pittsburgh. That committee included a broad spectrum of people from business, foundations, community service organizations, and city government, as well as organized labor. This committee and the city government of Pittsburgh believe that we need to attract more immigrants if Pittsburgh is to have a prosperous future. And not just doctors and nurses and software engineers, but also roofers and landscapers and restaurant and uh, laundry workers. So let's contrast this approach to immigration reform uh, uh, with the groups that Colcom supports. These groups, which receive tens of millions of dollars each year from Colcom, they instead call for mass arrest, detention, and deportation of millions of undocumented immigrants separation of parents from their children on a massive scale and the building of a five billion dollar wall along the u.s mexican border the largest and well and most well resourced of these groups is called the federation for american immigration fair which the southern poverty law uh, southern, southern poverty law center has identified as a hate group for the simple reason that fair has extensive ties to white supremacist groups and has made many racist statements FAIR's founder, John Tandon, once wrote, quote, I've come to the point of view that for European American society and culture to persist requires a European American majority, and a clear one at that. Tandon, Tandon helped to launch another anti-immigration group called the Center for Immigration Studies, CIS. The Southern Poverty Law Center has also identified CIS as a hate group, again for the same reasons. The director, the executive director of CIS said in a radio, radio interview in 2014 that, quote, we have to have security against both the dishwasher and the terrorist because you can't distinguish between the two with regards to immigration control. We know that in 2016, more than half the budgets of these two hate groups was provided by 
Colcomb Foundation. That's roughly $9 million. Without the support of Colcomb, these organizations would not exist, okay? Colcomb has given money to a number of local civic groups in Pittsburgh, but nowhere near on the same scale. It's fair to say that Colcomb, that the Colcomb Foundation is not so much a philanthrop philanthropic organization that dabbles in white supremacy, but a white supremacist organization that dabbles in civic philanthropy. One way to convey this is to say that Colcomb is like David Duke without the sheep and wearing a $5,000 suit. Now let's say David Duke shows up to your house and offers to mow your lawn and decorate your house for the holidays in exchange for your putting up a big sign on your lawn thanking David for being such a stand-up guy. David Duke's goal would be to insinuate himself into respectable society so that to paraphrase our current president, we might think that yes, there are some good white supremacists and we should welcome their point of view. This, we believe, is the goal of Colcom's philanthropy. That is to normalize the hate that they promote. I'm guessing the overwhelming majority of Pittsburghers would decline David Duke's offer. Even if the lawn really needed mowing and you can't afford Christmas decorations, I think most people would say, we can find another way. Similarly, our Pittsburgh civic organizations need to find a way to say no to Colcom. In Spanish, we have a saying, dime con quien andas y te diré quien eres. Tell me who you run with and I'll tell you who you are. The Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership and other well-meaning civic organizations need to stop running with Colcom. This is not an association you want. Thank you. Thank you, Guillermo, and thank you for explaining uh, exactly what this is. Because I've heard people say, oh, well, there's no way that Colcom could be so bad, right? But in reality, that's the message that they're really trying to send by putting their name on Santa's house, so that we think they're not that bad. The next person that's going to speak today is Pastor Dave Swanson. Uh, he's the pastor at the Pittsburgh Mennonite Church. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the holidays. I think that if you look around at this marketplace, you'll see uh, something that was designed to stimulate the holiday business and celebrate holiday spirit. However, by accepting Colcom money, the Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership is un uh, un unintentionally agreeing to celebrate Christmas with Colcom's uh, meaning behind it. Colcom wants a white Christmas. I'm not talking about weather. I'm talking about skin color. I'm talking culture. I'm talking race. And in the end, we're talking about human dignity and value. So over half of what the money that Colcom passes out goes to these white supremacist hate groups, goes to the anti-immigration groups that are tied to white supremacist hate groups. And I have to say as a Christian minister, that that is not the Christmas I want. It is not the holiday season I want. So, as a, for Christians, this Christmas is a celebration of God coming into the world as a helpless baby, as a person of color, as a refugee, and an immigrant. In our tradition, this is a divine declaration that every clan and family, every race and human group is beloved and valued. So we can't let Colcom determine what the holidays mean and by associating with them, we are allowing their message and their mission to infiltrate our beautiful holiday peace. So we need to deny and reject the affirmation that white bodies and white people are more valuable than brown bodies and brown people. And that is what Colcom stands for. You can tell by their check ledger. Pittsburgh is better than that. The meaning of our holiday traditions is better than that. So, we call on you, the Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership, to reject money from COCOM. Yeah. And instead, align yourself with justice and practice the discipline of restraint. Turn down money from promoters of a white America, a white Christmas, a white Hanukkah, a white holidays. COCOM, we ask you to re-examine your agenda. You may tell yourself it's about economics and population, but in fact it is riddled with 
racial bigotry and hate. And we ask you to stay away from our holidays this year and going forward. Thank you. Hello all. Hello. Uh, my name is Eva Westheimer and I'm a member of If Not Now Pittsburgh. We're a group of Jewish folks working to stand up against the occupation in Israel and Palestine and making the connections here, standing for liberty and justice and freedom and dignity for all. Um, and one of the things that I just want to say is that today, right, we're standing here with a coalition of folks with Casa San Jose and we're calling out the Colcom Foundation and these connections in our city are ever present because right over just over a month ago our city was turned upside down by a racist xenophobic anti-semitic anti-immigrant anti-refugee white nationalist shooting in our city right and we can't ignore that we can't ignore that 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 is happening today and the connections that the Colcom foundation funds some of the most anti-immigrant organizations in the United States today is a connection that we cannot ignore. So we have a choice in our community today. We're asking ourselves, which side are you on? Yeah. Right? So we can stand on the side of an organization that brands itself and by doing good, but at the same time is funding some of the most anti-immigrant hate groups in America, as we know, as folks have already shared, right? Or we can stand on the side of justice and self-determination for immigrants and for folks in our community today, right? So we have that choice and we have to ask our community, which side are you on? Because we know that in our community, we're only going to find safety, whole safety, through solidarity in our communities. So we know that as a Jewish community, we will only find safety by standing in solidarity with our immigrant uh, community. We know that our immigrant community will only find safety by standing in solidarity with our Jewish community and vice versa, right? We must stand together. Um, and so today, we're here together standing with Casa San Jose and all of the uh, coalition partners saying, we stand with, in safety and solidarity. So, <laughs> I wanna end us with a song. Uh, <laughs> and I would- Granddaughter. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter. Sing, drop cold, come right now. Saying, drop cold, come right now. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter. Say, and go, so great. Saying, drop cold, come now. The people gonna rise like the water. We're gonna go. The people gonna rise like the water. We're gonna calm this crisis down. We're gonna calm this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter. Hear the voice of my great granddaughter. Say, drop, cold, come right now. Say, drop, cold, come right now. All together, the people gonna rise like the water. Calm this crisis down. Are you the voice of my great granddaughter saying, "Drop cold, come right now"? I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying, "Drop cold, come right now." I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying, "Calm this." Right By standing in solidarity with our Jewish community and vice versa, right? We must stand together, um, and so today. We're here together standing with Casa San Jose and all of the uh, coalition partners saying we stand with, in safety and solidarity. Mm -hmm.